So we are preparing the next tour of portion Kitisa, which is the ninth one in Exodus. Now we had the same topic now for the previous two Torah portions, which is about the instructions to construct the tabernacle. The theme is, and the background is, that Moses is on the mountain for 40 years. Oh, sorry, 40, 40 days. And he is still receiving instructions prior to bringing down the first set of instructions prior to uh, the worshipping of the golden calf. And um, so part of these instructions are similar to the previous ones. Now what we saw with the previous two Torah portions, the first one was about the contribution. That was the first thing and then the, the instruction regarding the Ark of the Covenant. So the contribution was very important. Then last week we saw the contribution of the oil that they had to bring the children of Israel. Now this week is the same theme of a contribution and this time it's the instruction for uh, counting the people or lifting up the heads which um, involved bringing a half shekel of silver Now, when you look at the first two contributions the one is gold jewelry and it makes sense because the the tabernacle, uh, uh, the Ark of the Covenant was the, the next thing mentioned. And then last week we saw basically the second object of gold, the menorah, and the contribution of the oil, which is also the color of gold, um, which covers the most holy place and the holy place. The contributions for the most important artifact for the most holy place is the Ark of the Covenant. The contribution for the most important artifact within the holy place is the menorah. And now we're looking at the contribution of silver, the color silver. And it's associated with the outer court. Why is that so? They melted the silver and used it for uh, casting caps or the bottom parts of the structure, the support structure poles that upheld the outer court, the, the curtain, so to speak, the ba uh, boundary of the outer court. And those were visible from the outside. So they also looked like the letter Vav, these little supports. And the Vav represent man. So that is where we get the concept of we are the tabernacle of Yahweh that housed the presence. Now the Ohel Moed, if you look at the language within this Torah portion, actually refers to the holy place, which includes the Holy of Holies, or which is part of the Holy of Holies. So the tent of meeting is actually not the outer court, it's the holy place and the most holy place. The outer court represents all the people that support the structure that make up the, the outer structure in which the Mohel uh, Mohed, the, the tent of meeting, is placed within their midst. So now we see a better picture of us today as the living body of Messiah, the living house or the tabernacle uh, where, where you sh uh, Paul said that we are um, the body and the house that contain the presence of Yahweh. So that is the outer court. Now looking at the, the valves, you'll note that they are all pulling in different directions to uphold the structure. So if they're all pulling in the same direction, it means it will fall over. What does that mean? It means that we have different tasks or gifts or direction of uh, putting your effort into and those represent are represented through the, the main gifts of the spirit 
which uphold the structure so that the people can enter through the gateway the doorway into the holy place and have access to the brazen altar which is the first object now brass is the color of judgment so we have had the gold inside the gold liquid inside the holy place the silver on the outside and inside the outer court we have the brazen altar the color of judgment and the other object that is a brazen object is the laver now the sequence of events of this Torah portion um, continuing on from the previous one where it was talking about the altar of incense which is a golden object a golden altar in front of the curtain in front of the Holy of Holies the doorway that enter that is what guards the entry or that is what gives access to the entry and that signify the sweet smell or aroma of prayers or the worship that happens inside the holy place now on the outside we have the laver that give access to two things actually now when I read it this morning it actually stood out that the next object after the shekel half shekel contribution was mentioned was the laver the brazen laver and he mentioned it in relation to giving access to the brazen altar and if you don't use the laver before you use the brazen altar you will die and of course when you want to access the holy place and you don't use the laver or prepare at the laver when you enter the holy place you will die and the laver seemed to be something very specific something totally different than the other objects it's the only object that gave life or to extend grace during the, the, the issue of judgment in relation to the brazen altar the color of brass and also walking into the presence of Yahweh which is depicted by the menorah and the consuming fire because he's holy that makes him dangerous to approach so the laver covers you to from your past your sin from judgment and also from your future entering into the presence of Yahweh so that make the laver the centerpiece of grace within the tabernacle which stand out and the laver contains water now we're going to look at water in more detail in the Torah portion just to see what that actually means and how it relates to the rest of the objects now the other thing I want to highlight here is the same anomaly that happened in the previous Torah portion where Yahweh broke the sequence sort of uh, he's talking about you know instruction building the tabernacle and then he talks about the oil and then the priesthood it's sort of losing the rhythm and he inserts something but that means that those things are part of uh, the tabernacle in the same way he is describing everything and then the altar of incense and then he insert the shekel and the counting of the people everybody of 20 and above and that implicates that they are part of the tabernacle as well and then he continues um, with the brazen labor so we can see that the, the links that hold the tabernacle in place are first and all foremost the priesthood and their contributions and the contributions of the people which provide the oil and the other one are the contributions of the people that provide the support structure so the first contribution gave um, the light inside the holy place and this second or actually third contribution upholds the structure that allow it to exist in the physical now the physical is depicted by everything outside of the outer court and that is the world the physical realm where all the other people are 
and they are now able to look upon the outer court curtain and the support structure and see that Yahweh is in the midst of them which is depicted by the Ohel Moed which is the tent of meeting the holy place that can be seen from within the outer court and once you're inside the holy place the Ohel Moed part of that is the inner chamber which is the holy of holies where the Shekinah glory of Yahweh resides so that's just a, a basic structure and flow of events and these and little anomalies that just draw our attention to it as you move from one parasha to another and like I said before the white fire between the black fire the black fire represents all the letters all the words that's written down on paper or on the Torah scroll and the white fire are all the spaces in between of the things that are not said so we are specifically looking at the things that are not said framed and guided by the things that are said and the way they are said so asking a lot of questions when you read the Torah portion think of it and ask questions why is this so why did Yahweh insert this why is it silver what was it before oh it's a contribution was there contributions before so asking those questions will definitely um, color in the spaces in between and you'll get a lot of information so we we will have another very exciting Torah portion to look at as we discover the wide spaces in between um, the black letters of this Torah portion Kitty said so I hope you have a lovely day I'll speak to you soon Shalom